Good afternoon, and welcome once again to my daily chat. It is Christmas Eve, so Merry Christmas, in case I don't see you online tomorrow. Um, the episode today is number 571, and the topic today is um, don't settle. No, excuse me. Appearances can be deceptive, don't settle. That was the message. <laughs> that's the title for today's episode. Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself, and again, wish you a Merry Christmas, because that's tomorrow. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help powerful, successful, and high-achieving women find and create balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for Divine Feminine, which inspired these talks I've done every day now for mm, over two years now, called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's episode is number 571. I'm doing it a bit earlier because I have a commitment to be um, at Agape tonight because we're having a Christmas Eve service that will be wonderful. But I need to get this done before then so I can get showered, cleaned up, and go. Anyway, enough of my personal business. Let's get into the topic. The topic today is, thank you, Griselle, and blessed Christmas to you too. By the way, this is Facebook Live first in case you're watching it on YouTube and wondering who's commenting. You have to be on Facebook to watch the comments, but I will be putting this on YouTube later on. So um, the topic today, again, is appearances can be deceptive. Don't settle. This actually ties into my broadcast from Friday, which talks about how relationships can be a lot like gift wrap. Or should we, let's just say relationships can feel like they've been gift wrapped because they look so perfect on the outside, but what's inside doesn't match the, con the packaging. This is kind of the same theme, but I want to break it down more bluntly. And yes, because it is Christmas, the idea of packaging and Christmas and, and gift wrap and stuff would be very relevant. But if it's happens to be your birthday and you're watching, it would fit too. <laughs> the thing is that we are, well, let me just say this. I live in Los Angeles. It's a town filled with appearances that can be deceptive, just to be transparent. And... No, I was, oh, okay, I was going to be crude. No, I won't do that. Okay, I'm stay clean. Um, but the truth is, a lot of people put their energy and focus onto making themselves look perfect without doing the inner work. And I'm going to cut right to the chase. I talked about this yesterday, I think. I've done some recent broadcasts on the same theme, so these are different, different pokes at the same bear, so to speak. And so the thing I want to really get clear to you, give you today is that if you are someone who is single and dating, I highly, highly encourage you, do what I would say is your due diligence. And I don't mean like do a police report, although that can be a bad thing sometimes. But when you meet somebody, don't just imagine, oh, they're perfect and jump into bed with them. It's simply, well, first of all, you're jumping in early. So, Ariana, nice to see you, lovely face, and thank you for wishing me Merry Christmas. And yes, thank you. I'm glad I appreciate your response to my dedication to the Divine Feminine. It's my joy, my passion, my service. And a Merry Christmas to you and all my friends in Canada. It's good to see you. Um, again, Facebook Live, interactive comments. <laughs> so, topic, theme. When we go on dates, and I, I, I'm not going to say necessarily women more than men, but I suspect more women than men do this, is they create fantasies about the partner they've just met. They meet some person, and I use, I use perspective from male to female in this context because it's easy to describe the pronouns versus they and they. So women go online, they meet somebody on a dating app, the dating person meets them, uh, reaches out to them. Oh, and a little sidebar, because I had this happen to a friend of mine. She was out um, on a, she was going to meet this guy on a date who had, no, back up a second. I'll give you two examples. Sorry, I'm running ahead of myself. Two examples of a friend of mine, she gave me these, and I talked about these a couple of days ago. One of which was she met this guy, she saw this guy online on this app. His profile was prolific. It was so well written. It was actually almost so romantically enticing she could not resist him. So she reached out and messaged him and praised him for what he said in his profile. And all she got back was a thumbs up. So she thought, that's a bit odd. Waited a couple of days, sent another message to him. And what he got back was another thumbs up. And my intuition, and maybe yours too, was going, hang on a second. Somebody tells me this wonderfully written profile doesn't match the person's personality who actually wrote the profile, meaning that maybe the profile was written by somebody else. Oh my God, that happens? Yes, I have friends of mine who actually are coaches that write people's profiles for them. So again, appearances can be deceptive. So you've got to watch out for this stuff. Second instance, um, another friend of mine went out on a date with this guy that she met through a dating app. And so they went on the first date. Instead of a time to meet at the restaurant, you're being, being smart, mutually, um, I can say this, both taking their time to get there their own way so they can meet at a central location, not at each other's place, so it's clean. She got there, I see, on time, waiting for the guy to show up. Half an hour went by. The guy finally shows up half an hour late, doesn't say a word. He sits down, like, how are you doing? Wonderful to see you, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, my, my, my feeling was I want to wring the guy's neck. <laughs> because it's like, if you, especially because we're now, you know, if you have noticed, we've had smartphones for quite a while now. It's easy with a smartphone to communicate. 
by text, by phone, by FaceTime, by messenger, by so many different ways. And if you're running late and you don't have the awareness to text, call, connect with the person you're meeting, say, my apologies, I'm running late, I'll be there maybe 30 minutes. I mean, maybe it's like, I'm sorry to say it, but I got stuck in traffic or I, I ran late getting out of the house or whatever it was, saying, I'm gonna be there, but I'm running 30 minutes late. And if you wanna leave, I apologize, but I wanna let you know that so you have the choice. That to me is an integrity. And that is a quality that is vital for a conscious relationship. Integrity, so put that in your filing cabinet. So this appearance of this can be deceptive is such a prevalent and, I say a nice way, it's an unfortunately, it's lowering the standards to a very low common denominator, people who don't bother to do the work. Now, Ariana's a friend of mine I've known for quite a few years through the uh, Warrior Sage community, which is a powerful training community, which is one of quite a few I've been through, to be honest. I've been through quite a lot of teaching, teaching the trains over the years, because for me, what's most rewarding is the personal growth work where we get to be better beings ourselves and get to serve and express and teach and share with everybody else. Unfortunately, a lot of, pe a lot of people don't do that sort of thing. They don't read books, they don't study, they don't take courses, they don't go to seminars, they don't do anything like that. And they think life is fine, which for them it probably is in that bubble they live in. But if you're someone who's done work and personal growth and you meet somebody who hasn't, and if, you, if you're watching this video and you know that, you know exactly what we'll talk about, is the disparity in understanding, the lack of accountability, responsibility, integrity, accountability, I see that word already, authenticity, there's another word I was gonna use. That person who's done growth with it tends to embody is generally a higher, um, rating, because it may not be perfect, but higher rating than somebody who hasn't. Most people who have done work on some self-reflective, evolutionary, personal growth format have gained skills and insights and personal responsibility that puts them ahead of the game. For most people, getting ahead means making more money than, making more money than somebody else. It doesn't mean being a better person. And unfortunately, in this culture, we have a lot of people who cry foul and play victim, which is this is a whole other conversation we're going to get into now, but that's a big piece of the problem we have, is that this culture is suffering from a lack of accountability, individually speaking. So your dating life, <laughs> if the culture is doing that, your dating life has a high risk of having the same problem. So again, what I said earlier is your due diligence is definitely required. So if you're somebody who is single and wanting to get in a relationship, now, let me one side, slight caveat. If you're single and you want to have sex, no problem, just go ahead and do that, it'd be fun but what's the price you pay on that too? But I'm speaking about, speaking about deeper commitment to a real relationship, to finding somebody you want to explore and grow with, someone who has shared values, someone on a common spiritual path, someone who maybe has the same eating preferences you do. Like if you're a vegan, being somebody who's not, may be a problem. I've had that one myself. I'm not a vegan, I've been with ones who are, and there's a certain friction there. We can make it work, but it's harder. So finding common values is a good thing too. And again, if you're somebody who's become more aware and grown through your journeys the last several years, you'll probably notice your dating standards have been raised somewhat and they don't fit the paradigm what came before. Don't give those up. It's so easy sometimes to settle for less than you really deserve and choose for less than what you think because it looks good on the outside. I'm just going to tell you now, it may be fun at the beginning, but you're going to pay a heavy price later on. And I highly recommend you don't do that. You'd be better off and I've actually had some recent experiences, not in a relationship, but in other areas where I thought saw something that was like, I really wanted that. And when I found out afterwards, I missed out. Initially, I was like, oh man. But literally a week or two later, I got to see back at the situations. One was a, one was a date, in fact, and see what was really going on. I was extremely relieved it didn't happen. So I've learned the lesson that patience is a virtue. <laughs> and, and patience is rewarding sometimes. You know, was the patience is rewarded. Patience definitely is rewarded when you don't rush into things. And dating, take your time. When you meet somebody who looks amazing, they may be amazing, or it may be a good act. So take your time getting to know them. Put the energy into knowing this person, getting to know them. So the due diligence I was talking about isn't necessarily about, as I said, police reports, although in some cases that's come in handy occasionally. But it's being willing to discover who the other person is and what they're about. They may say their values are this, this, and this. But when you meet them, you start talking to them, and realize their values aren't even that, they're skewed. It's good to know that before you get into a committed relationship. It's harder to get out once you're in, so to speak. So to take the time up front to be willing to hold off the carnal pleasures that you may be jumping into, whatever that is for you, and to do the diligence to be willing to say, okay, before we commit to anything on a carnal or a intimate level that's beyond that boundary where you can still walk away easily, be willing to ask questions, to find out who this person is, 
to know what they're about and to know if it's really worth being with them. Looks can be deceptive and appearances too. So do your homework, do your, do your research to make sure the person you're actually going out with is the person you actually met. I think you've gotten my reprimand. <laughs> so this is um, part of a couple of talks I've said. I talked about this on Friday about uh, gift wrap. I invite you to look at the last few broadcasts I've done. They tie this together as well. And this one I want to do quickly. I'm just going to sign off to go to go get ready. Um, as a reminder to you of what's possible. Tomorrow will be Christmas Day and I've got a bunch of fun things going on. So we're doing a Facebook Live sometime during the day. 5 p.m. Pacific time, by the way, is my normal time. But because of the holidays, it's been all over the map. So I'll be back in tomorrow with another broadcast. Um, replays for this, by the way. Um, this is Facebook Live, as I mentioned. And it's on my personal page first. Then stored on my business page, which is author on Facebook. My personal page is, is Barry Selby without the author uh, suffix. And also onto YouTube, I put them there if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. You can subscribe to the channel in the playlist Messages from the Masculine. You can watch all of my broadcasts, actually more easily in Facebook because they're all together. And thirdly, I have a podcast I'm loading up with broadcasts in audio format, taking these and re, re, um, reassigning them. Reassigning? That does. That works. And that's on iTunes. You can look for Messages from the Masculine. Subscribe to that if you wish as well and download those when you want. Um, this is Christmas Eve, so no homework. However, <laughs> if you have been triggered by what I've said, and if you've been provoked by what I've said, make some notes to yourself to follow up the day after Christmas. They'll give you two days off. And to be really clear about what you want. I will put in the comment, I will put in the comments the link to my discovery session, my gift to you, so we can talk if you want to find out more about how I work, and maybe share some of what's going on for you so we can maybe get your course corrected before the new year. I do a lot of things brewing for the new year. I'll be talking about those later on. Um, but that's it, really. If you're doing something tonight for Christmas Eve to go celebrate, if you're in LA, come down to Agape, where I'll be in about an hour and a half, and uh, celebrate with us. If you're somewhere else, please take care of yourself and have fun. Enjoy your Christmas Eve. Enjoy your Christmas. Well, I'll be back in tomorrow to wish you a Merry Christmas. And uh, as always, take care of yourselves. I'll see you again tomorrow for more fun and games. Have fun. Bye. <laughs>